Uh, I'm Nitz. That's not my real name. It's a nickname. I don't remember how I got it. Yep. Hey everyone, welcome back. So in the last video, I shared some initial tests I did converting 3D animated renders of our Nitz model into a more traditional looking 2D animation style. If you haven't watched that video yet, it's probably a good place to start. Since that video posted, I got a lot of suggestions in the comments section about ways to potentially streamline that process and how to improve some of the more obvious flaws in the test that I had shared. And a few of your suggestions did send me down some promising new paths, which I will get to in a moment. But first, I just want to quickly cover some of the updates I've made to the Nitz 3D model. In the last test I shared, you probably noticed that Nitz's facial expression never really changed. Like, at all. His body moved around a whole lot, but his face always had the same blank, soulless stare. And that's because his face hadn't been rigged yet. So that was the first thing I wanted to tackle after posting last month's video. And that process basically involved creating a huge set of pose morphs for Nitz's face, which are basically a wide range of different facial expressions that could then either be animated manually or driven by a facial motion capture performance, which I was very keen to test out. But one thing I quickly discovered with the facial mocap was that my performance was a bit too subtle for the cartoonish style of the Nitz character model. I wasn't getting those extreme mouth expressions when Nitz was speaking, and so it was suddenly not looking as cartoonish as the show. So what I ended up doing was creating an extra set of face controls that I could layer on top of the facial motion capture performance to really push specific expressions as needed. Typically, when you're doing a 2D animated show, you design a mouth chart for each character to identify certain phonemes in speech, such as an A mouth, an O mouth, an F mouth, etc. So basically, I created an additional set of pose morphs for the Nitz model that emulated those specific mouth shapes, using Nitz's mouth chart from the original series as reference. I then set up a set of controllers to slide those new expressions on and off where needed after the facial motion capture was plugged in. So if I really need to push an O mouth, for example, or accentuate his eyebrows, or make his eyes go wide, this additional set of controllers allows me to do that. So once I had Nitz's face all rigged up and some facial motion capture plugged in, it was time to see how the custom tune shader would handle reproducing a facial performance. But before doing that, I first wanted to make some improvements to the AI tune shader per some of your very helpful suggestions from the last video. For example, in the last round of tests, I pointed out how poorly the pupils behaved in the converted 2D renders. And my initial thought was that we would have to correct those inconsistent pupils by manually redrawing them over the tune look renders frame by frame. However, a few of you suggested eliminating the pupils from the artwork that was being used to train the AI tune shader so that the pupils wouldn't appear in the 2D converted renders and then utilize my 3D software's built-in tune shader to render out only the pupils in the 3D animation, and then composite the two renders together. So to see if this would work, I removed the pupils from all of the training artwork I had put together for Nitz, leaving me with these very freaky, deadite looking versions of Nitz, which I then retrained the AI tune shader on. I then also turned off the pupils from the 3D render of Nitz's face animation, so that the AI tune shader wouldn't be tempted to redraw them in the 2D conversion process. Finally, it was time to see how this updated tune shader handled Nitz's facial performance, specifically what kind of job it would do recreating Nitz's mouth when he was speaking. And the results were terrible, just absolutely abysmal. Nitz's mouth was closed when he was supposed to be talking, and then suddenly his teeth would appear over his lips when he wasn't talking. It was a real flippin' mess. And so, like the pupils, the mouth became another element that I realized was going to have to be stripped out of the custom tune shader and find another way to generate it, which meant creating yet another version of the training artwork where now Nitz not only doesn't have any pupils, but he's also missing a mouth. And for good measure, I also stripped out the lines below his sideburns because they were looking wonky too. Additionally, on the 3D side of things, I had to create a copy of Nitz's head with the mouth removed as well as not to confuse the AI tune shader. I then messed around with Cinema 4D's in software sketch and tune shader on just the mouth to see how close I could get it to pass for the hand-drawn style of the show, so that when composited on top of the AI shader's 2D rendering of Nitz's head, it would look like it matched. And those results? ended up looking pretty good. I now feel like I've finally gotten a result that looks like something I would actually feel comfortable putting in the Undergrads movie. Uh, I'm Nitz. That's not my real name, it's a nickname. I don't remember how I got it. Yep. 
Again, I really want to thank everyone who contributed their knowledge and expertise to the discussion. Your suggestions were extremely helpful, so please keep them coming in the comment section. I also did a couple tests where I changed the light direction in the 3D render to see how well the AI Tune shader would emulate that. So if the light source should be coming from the right side of Nitz's face versus the left side, how well does it reprocess the shadows in the 2D style? So having gone through this whole process with Nitz, I now know it needs to be done to correctly split up the training artwork for all of the other characters and how their 3D models need to be set up as well. And I know it seems like this is all taking a very long time just to take a few baby steps, but there was a lot of trial and error involved, countless crappy versions that got it to this point where it's much more refined. And also, I'm the only one taking these baby steps at the moment. I needed to go through this entire process with Nets to figure out how it needs to be done for all of the characters. Then we'll know what roles we need to hire for and start to build a team of people working through the steps of this process simultaneously. And it won't just be me. So things will eventually start moving a whole lot faster. A few people requested access to the 3D Nets model to run their own tests. Some folks suggested strictly utilizing a 3D package like Blender and doing the entire Toon Shade look within that software. I already went down a similar path a few years ago in creating a 3D Toon Look Rocco test. I use Cinema 4D, which is my software of choice, simply because I've been using it for 20 years. I'm not familiar with Blender or really any other 3D animation programs. And honestly, I don't have the time or bandwidth right now to learn a whole new piece of software to potentially end up with results comparable to what I'd gotten a few years ago. But that's not to say that one of you might not find a better way of doing this. And so after clearing it with my production partners at BrainPower, I'm happy to provide a link to our 3D Nits model, which you'll find in the video description below. For those that want to tinker with it to try to get this 3D character to look even more 2D, by all means, please have at it. Also, in the comments from the part one video, a few of you requested a step-by-step -step tutorial on this 3D to 2D conversion process I've been experimenting with. And I definitely want to put that together for you guys, but an in-depth tutorial is going to take a bit of time to write and cut together. And right now, my main focus needs to be ushering the movie progress forward. So a tutorial is coming, I promise. It's just not my top priority at the moment. Finally, in the last video, I said my focus would be shifting to working on the animatic for the movie. However, this latest round of testing was definitely a distraction from that. But now that I'm taking a break from R&D for a while, I really am going to be getting back to the animatic. And hopefully in the next update, I'll be able to share a non-spoilery snippet. Until then, thanks again for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.